Hey everybody, the History Guy here, and I am really excited to be bringing to you some footage today. Uh, the alpha version gameplay footage of the successor to Ultimate General Civil War, put out by Game Labs, the same company that brought us that amazing title. This is Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail. And this is the first gameplay footage from the website, which just went live today. Uh, so I'm going to be sharing some of that with you. Uh, the first several minutes is all going to be some naval combat footage. If you want to see uh, some of the footage that they're showing, some gameplay footage of land combat, you can skip to about the eight minute mark of this video. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read to you some of the highlights of what they've shared on the website as you watch uh, some of the naval combat unfold. So first of all, let's talk a little about the, the uh, naval gameplay. The game is set between the years 1775 and 1815. Battles range from small ship-to-ship -ship duels all the way to the largest fleet actions of the period. Command and control in Ultimate Admiral is intuitive. Players can select ships by clicking on them or selecting their names from the fleet list. So it's very similar to how uh, Ultimate General Civil War operates in that way, and you'll see a lot of similarities as you look at the interface. Uh, similarly, players are able to issue simple movement commands by clicking or dragging arrows to plot more complex courses. Players can control the type of shot, primary targets, and where to concentrate fire for every individual ship as well as order boarding actions. The AI can assist in controlling as many or as few ships as ordered to, also like Ultimate General Civil War. Likewise, ships can be grouped into formations for ease of control. All ships present in-game are historical replicas. Their models were created from the original design drafts used in their construction. That is awesome. That's really cool. I'm excited about that. Uh, some designs have de had detailed public documentation. Others required more rigorous research into naval databases. Players will get the chance to meet famous ships like the USS Constitution, the HMS Victory, HMS Trincomalee, and many more in-game. And everything I'm reading to you is actually coming directly from their website. So you can go and read this for yourself as well as see some screenshots that correspond to what I'm reading. Uh, each ship has several characteristics that describe their navigational and combat abilities. The primary characteristic of all ships is, to carry, is their carry weight. Weight affects the number of upgrades, types of cannon, crew sizes that are available to be mounted and quartered on your ships. Each ship offers up to five upgrade slots and four gun decks. This is really cool. I'm excited. Likewise, depending on the size of the ship, the number of officers will be required to command the vessel. Once, uh, or One is enough for the smallest, but up to six officers will be required to control the largest warships. In-game, ships are available under three designations, warships, transports, and mortar batteries. Warships are not your only main battle units, but are also universally useful vessels that can perform other tasks, such as transportation and bombardment. Uh, so let's talk about uh, a couple of other things here. There's a lot here. I'm not going to get to all of it in the amount of video that's here. Every ship is outfitted with armor pr to protect the crew and internal structure of the vessel from damage. When a round hits the hull, penetration is calculated by a combination of base cannon penetration values and effective ranges. Uh, and eventually that will determine how much damage is dealt. Um, gonna, maneuvering is paramount in naval combat because penetration depart, depends largely on armor value. Angling your ships away from your enemy vessels will reduce the damage dealt by the enemy ship and the damage taken to your own and vice versa. Uh, a ship is commanded by her officers and manned by her crew. The quality of both the officers and crew will affect the performance of your ships. Each officer has a set of skills and occupies a position where he will put them to good use. And you can actually see on the website an example of the different officers and where their skills are and how that affects the overall uh, kind of ability of the crew. Uh, there's efficiency, sailing, boarding, gunnery, morale, and stamina are all examples. Ships' crews consist of both sailors and marines. The former are responsible for the proper operation of a ship and the latter for engaging the enemy with musketry at close range during battle. Marines are professional soldiers who are effective in land operations. Sailors may likewise fight on land, but their lack of skill at arms will leave much to be desired. The ship contains a number of squads equal to the number of officers aboard. Disembarking squads requires an officer to assume command of the detachment. 
While conducting landing operations, if the maximum number of squads are disembarked, the ship will be left in control of a skeleton crew that is incapable of fighting. When disembarking, a boat is created for each squadron to navigate to shore. Upon reaching solid ground, the squad lands and will act as a land unit. If necessary, the landed troops may return to their ships via any free boats that are ashore. So that's pretty cool. Uh, morale is constantly shifting throughout battles. When a ship receives damage, loses an officer, or has a mast destroyed, its morale falls. When damage is inflicted on an enemy ship, morale improves. If morale is too low, the ship is immobilized or surrounded and fighting multiple enemies, the officer and crew will begin to panic and may surrender the ship. In this case, the ship raises a white flag and begins to drift. You must dispatch a boat with an officer aboard to capture any surrendered ship. So there you have it, some of the overview about naval uh, combat in the game. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start reading a little about the, uh, the campaign overview. And this uh, will actually take us right into the look at the land combat. So uh, land combat is going to be starting here. The, that uh, video will start here in about the next two minutes. Uh, so I'm just going to keep talking and let you see what's happening. Because uh, there's really no narration on any of the video that they provided. They just provided gameplay video. So let's talk about the campaign map. Uh, and they show, again, screenshots on the website. The one uh, I'm looking at looks like it's... Uh, uh, Charleston, uh, South Carolina, Savannah, Georgia, I see uh, 1780, so obviously there must be uh, scenarios that involve the American Revolutionary War. Uh, so this is the campaign map, and it uh, shows a little bit of that. Uh, in Ultimate Admiral, the campaign is divided into regionally distinct chapters. Each chapter traverses a region of European or American waters and consists of multiple battles, events, and other points of interest. Every chapter has multiple stages or turns measured one month at a time. The game world is updated after every stage, repopulating the map with new challenges and opportunities for the player to tackle. So it actually, it, in this way, it looks like it definitely differs from Ultimate General Civil War. Uh, a different way of handling things, so I like that. I'm curious to know more about that. The campaign mixes historical events with those triggered by player choice. Many events are driven by player action, such as exploring a coastal cave or other point of interest, which could trigger a story with a significant reward. Or losing a battle, which could lead to a series of events that make life even harder for the player. Oftentimes, players will be asked to make choices with potentially far-ranging consequences affecting other events later in the campaign. Some events are triggered by the success or failure of previous missions, which can begin longer quest chains. For example, should players send a ship to patrol coastal waters for smugglers and fail, they may find themselves ordered to rescue an admiral's daughter after a rise in piracy. That's really cool. I like this a lot. Uh, should players instead send a squadron and capture a smuggler, they could be ordered to take the smuggler's hideout by storm with a chance to capture valuable materials. In addition, there are a number of points of interest for players to explore towns, geographical, geographical landmarks, islands, and more. Exploration may lead to battles, random events, or loot. Missions. There are two types of missions available in Ultimate Admiral. The first are epic and minor battles that require players to deploy and utilize their fleet directly, engaging enemy forces head-on, much like previous Ultimate General games. The second are missions where players assign a number of ships to a task for the duration of a stage or stages and await the outcome. Players will have to weigh their odds of success and the absence of those ships during battles or events against the potential rewards. And again, they're showing screenshots of all of this stuff. Uh, they show the fleet management screen where you can uh, deal with customizing your ships, the crews, um, the technologically more advanced ships. You get renown and experience, much like you do in Ultimate General. Um, as their reputation grows by winning battles and successfully resolving other missions, so too does the renown. But neglecting events or losing battles will just as quickly lower it, along with your Admiralty's faith in your abilities. You can use your renown to order new ships and to research technology, giving you a distinct advantage in battle. 
in addition to renown, players gain experience over time, allowing them to improve their admiral's skills. Upgrading skills can increase player access to resources, improve relations with the Admiralty, increase recovery rates for your crews, and offer cheaper prices. So that's very similar to uh, Ultimate General Civil War in that way. Your officers and crews also gain experience from fighting in battle, much like Ultimate General Civil War. Now here's something I learned from this that I did not know. Uh, this, while it is called Ultimate Admiral, there is a large land component to this game. Uh, and I just want to read that to you real quick. Um, th this is just the real high, kind of the highlight of it. We've talked about naval battles. We've talked about the fact that there are landing operations. Uh, but also it says control of the seas is only half the battle. Whether on the New World, Venerable Europe, or in the many islands in between, once the war at sea is over, an invasion must commence. Take control of more traditional national armies to combat your enemies on land in major campaigns where your small force of marines will not do. So I'm, I'm curious to hear more about that because it sounds to me like in theory at least we could be fighting major Napoleonic war battles, maybe even some Re American Revolutionary War battles since that's also a theater in all of this. I'm really curious to see more about that. Uh, so hopefully we'll get to see a little more about that. So I'm going to let you go ahead and watch the rest uh, of the gameplay video here. There's not a whole lot left to it. Um, maybe a couple of minutes left. But um, I'm going to put the link in the description below that will take you to the Ultimate Admiral website. It's just ultimateadmiral.com. You can read everything I just shared with you. You can watch the videos that I'm uh, sharing here. Those are also on the website from YouTube. Uh, but excited, really, really excited about what this has to offer. It's supposed to be out later on this year. No specific date yet. But here you go. Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail. I'm really excited about this one. Thanks for checking in with me, guys.